And it gives me great pleasure to announce the 2009 Telstra Tasmanian Businesswoman of the Year is Fiona Reynolds. Well, isn't this overwhelming? <laughs> and um, journos don't usually say that. <laughs> I'd like to thank Telstra and congratulate Telstra as well on these awards. They are fantastic awards and I have been um, thrilled for all of the previous winners. I think they've been um, a wonderful uh, bunch of business people and, um, and the awards are a great recognition um, of their achievements. I will admit though that applying for this award for me was actually not an easy decision to make. And I guess that's because when I um, was given the award at the examiner, I made a real point of saying to the paper that when they were doing a story announcing their new editor, could they please not focus on the fact that I'm a woman and that I was the first woman of, to edit the examiner in 167 years. What I wanted them to focus on was the fact that I'd returned to the newspaper and I didn't really see that me being a woman was the reason why I got the job. And I was certainly assured by management that that was never a factor in their consideration. And, and uh, I'm pleased to say they also didn't consider the fact that I had two small children and was I going to be able to do the job as a woman. So the question, I guess, is why did I decide in the end uh, to apply for the award? Uh, there aren't many women who are in senior management positions in our industry, in the media. If you have a look around, there aren't many women editors of newspapers in this country. There aren't many women who are heading up news organisations in, um, in broadcast. And in some respects, that means there aren't a great deal of women that I can actually uh, mix with um, within our own industry. And I thought it would be a wonderful opportunity to network with other women in other industries and learn from them. I spoke with Colleen McGann, who was, um, who's the head of St Luke's, and she was, I believe, the 2002 Telstra Tasmanian Businesswoman of the Year. And she told me that it was a fantastic networking opportunity, a great way to learn from other people. And that was one of, I guess, the, um, the principal reasons. The other reason that I decided to apply for the award was to show a lot of our younger female journalists that they can do these jobs and they can do these jobs with a family. And whilst you never get the balance right, you can do it guilt-free. And um, I was pleased that within the newsroom, um, a lot of the women there now um, you know, are thinking about their own development opportunities. And I'd like to think that, um, that that gives them an example and something as well to aspire to, because I would love to be able to, to see more women come through our ranks. The readers, I'm pleased to say, don't care that I'm a woman as the editor. They certainly don't cut me any slack. I've had um, readers write in, one reader wrote in once and said, that editor's a bloody joke. <laughs> and she has the intestinal fortitude of a fried grasshopper. Uh, and I thought that was actually pretty entertaining, so I printed it <laughs> in the paper. And I had quite, for a couple of weeks after that, everybody in the newsroom started calling me grasshopper. <laughs> And, uh, you know, if they don't like something in the paper, they certainly tell you, and I'm really pleased that they don't cut me any, any slack for being a woman. You know, I've been um, accused of causing dementia in, in people in nursing homes when we changed the crossword pretty quickly. I found I had to change the crossword back. <laughs> that was a really bad move. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so uh, I guess the award, um, you know, was... Um, you know, was an opportunity as well for me to think about women that have inspired me, and that's really been a byproduct for me of applying. Uh, I've thought about those women, and um, the first person that has inspired me was my mother. And um, my uh, mother died when I was 24, and before uh, she died, there were some fantastic lessons that she gave me that I have always held very dear to my heart. 
One of those is work hard and just keep working. And she always worked incredibly hard. She also said to me, you will always know what your priorities are in life and you will live your life by those. I know my priority is my family. And if my job, I can say, sorry, Phil, but if my job ever um, came uh, between me and my family, then it wouldn't be sustainable. And I'm pleased to say the examiner has been incredibly supportive of, um, of me in that way and they perfectly understand that, you know, the guys on the management team, they're all parents too and uh, they know what we go through just as much and I know that their families are their priority as well. She um, also said to me, unless you can understand other people, you can never hope to understand yourself. And that's really the approach that I take when I manage people. If I don't really understand the people around me, what makes them tick, what drives them, what makes them passionate about their job, why they're there in the first place, then I can't really hope to either retain them um, or, or, um, or understand the impact that I have on them. And we all do, as managers, have a great impact on the people around us. Sometimes it's, we like to think that more often than not it is positive, sometimes it's negative, and we need to, um, to understand that our personalities too have an impact on other people because of their personalities. The other person who's inspired me as a woman um, is my grandmother, my mum's mum. She is 91 years old. She still lives at home at St Helens. She um, stepped up, I guess, to the, the full maternal role when my mother died. And she's always been incredibly supportive of everything that I've done. She still subscribes to the examiner, even though she can't read it anymore because her eyesight fails. She just says that she wants people to let her know if she's in the death notices so that she, so that she doesn't need to keep going on with her life. <laughs> you know, that day, she can just wipe the day out, she said, if she's in the death notices. So she keeps subscribing and I think really she subscribes to support me. And uh, she, she lives on her own, she uh, looks after herself, she doesn't have any help except for a gardener who's in his 80s. So for me, she is, um, is an inspiration as well. Again, I'd like to thank the examiner for taking uh, the punt on me and, um, and to the, the management team and all of the staff, all of the staff in our newsroom um, and right across the examiner for their support. People often ask me how myself and our group advertising manager um, who's a bloke, um, how we work together. And my usual response is, it's a typical male-female relationship. He makes all the money and I spend it. <laughs> and funny enough, people seem to sort of go, go oh yeah, I get that. <laughs> but that's how we make a joke about it. The, uh, the sponsors, um, I would like to thank sincerely Telstra and all of the other sponsors of the other awards. I would like to congratulate all of the finalists here today uh, and the individual award winners. I'm looking forward to, as I said, getting to know a lot of you through, um, through the network, uh, to be able to support each other as well in our future endeavours and to learn a lot from you. Uh, my family, as I said, um, I love them dearly and I thank them for all of their support. Uh, recently, I was told um, by one of my aunts, who's just been magnificent in, in supporting our family, she said, uh, you know, we weren't really sure about you taking that job. And I said, I know. I said, you weren't excited for me. And she said, no, we looked at Lily and we looked at Amelia and we thought, you know, they're so little. Now, how are they going to cope? And she said, I can honestly say, um, that you proved us wrong. You managed to do it really well, you and Peter, together. And, um, and that uh, made me feel, I guess, to take a, a load off my shoulders on feeling like, you know, yeah, I am actually doing this and I'm doing okay at it and my family isn't suffering at all. It's going really well. And um, finally to um, my darling husband, Peter, who I mentioned before. Um, I was asked once to uh, give a speech on work-life balance and I thought, this is really hard, you know, I'm not sure that I've got any balance, how am I going to give anybody tips? So bottom line, I said, um, 
my secret to work-life balance is I married well. <laughs> and a lot, of the, um, a lot of the men in the audience at that stage went, what? <laughs> but everybody else understood exactly what I meant, and I certainly did uh, marry well. Um, Peter, thank you for everything. Um, I love you. Thank you. Oh.